Hi everybody, I'm really excited to talk about the YH700C uh, in today's video because a couple of months ago when I did my initial review of this great little um, budget strobe uh, flash, I promised to explain a bit more about high speed sync, which is an amazing feature on budget flashes, especially you know at this point. And um, why high speed sync can be incredibly useful um, as a technical and a creative tool for photographers and get you out of a, a few jams as well. Now, although I'm using the YH700C as the example in this particular video, of course, you know, what I'm talking about applies to any flashes or strobes that, that offer high speed sync. Okay, so one of the problems with flashes that don't offer high speed sync is that you can't really use them outside as a fill flash if you want to start to control the ambient light so you know when we're inside and we we're doing let's say a flash portrait and we think okay say we're doing some sort of um, uh, portrait where uh, you know w where we want to darken down the light in the room so you know what it'd be fairly simple wouldn't it with um with, with a flash when we're inside because we know that you know a, a 200th of a second if we're inside, the room is probably going to be fairly dim anyway. And what we can then do is we can tighten up the aperture on our um, on our camera, and then that will reduce the ambient light. And then we can increase the power of the flash, can't we? The problem is when you're outside, the sun is so bright, even on overcast days, that your shutter speed has to be faster than a two hundredth of a second. Uh, to control that light anyway unless you use a really tight aperture like an f16 or an f22 or something like that and that's not what we want for uh, nice portraits often we want to be shooting quite tight with quite a wide aperture don't we say an f28 and f18 or f14 or something so we get that nice sh um, really narrow depth of field look so we can blare up the background but with a normal flash it's very tricky to do that because as soon as you start going to f2.8 on a sunny day or even on an overcast day, even if you're in sort of open shade or something like that, your shutter speed is going to shoot up to 500 and thousands of a second. And if you use a normal flash, what's going to happen is you're going to end up with these black bars over your photos. Now, the way that cameras, uh, way that flashes like the white 700 c get over this is instead of just... Um, firing one burst at like a ten, ten thousandth of a second which is the way it works and to kind of take a step back the problem with dslrs with shutters is that as the shutter um is shooting say below 200 of a second basically the way it works it kind of opens and closes like that but when it's shooting at very fast apertures the shutter doesn't actually do that the shutter is just a slit that moves across your scene in front obviously it happens very fast but because it's a slit when the flash pops you get these black bars but what the YH700C does, instead of just firing once, it strobes incredibly quickly. Um, so for all that sort of time that the slit is going over the, the front of your um, sensor, it's lighting up your subject. Um, so that means we can start to control ambient light when you're outside. That means we can use our flash as a fill flash to light up our subject, you know, to fill in those dark bits under the eyes, even outside when we're using wide apertures. So how exciting is that? Because that suddenly brings in all sorts of opportunities in terms of gelling and darkening skies down and making things a lot more a lot more um, dramatic. So what I thought I would do, instead of me just waffling on like this, um, we'll look at some kind of real life, well, not real re real life examples because I'm setting them up in the back garden, <laughs> um, but some examples of, so you can see what high speed sync can do and how you might want to kind of think about applying it to your photos and uh, your images. Okay, so if you have a quick look at this setup video, what you can see here is um, my 600D on its tripod with the Apple YH700C on top of it, and then my subject, the little kind of uh, bust on the table in front, and it's a typical kind of open shade type of setup that you might have. Um, so there's a bit of diffuse light, but the background is quite light because it's quite a sunny day. So if we, uh, oh, and you'll probably see there were some filters on the table as well, ready for in a bit. So if we look at the first photograph, what you can see here is if uh, there's no flash, this is just the camera in aperture priority mode, just popping off a picture. So as you can see, the background is quite bright compared to the subject. Um, 
It's taken at uh, f2.8, so we've got a nice blur background, and uh, the cameras show 320 20th of a second. I was using the Canon 50mm f1.8 lens to take these pictures. So in this sort of situation where you need to brighten up your subject, normally you'd use a little bit of fill flash, wouldn't you? However, if I just use the pop-up flash on the camera, the, shutter, the uh, shutter speed goes up to a 200th of a second, and it can't go any faster, because then we'll get those black lines appearing on. So as you can see, Although the subject is much brighter, the background is way too bright now, really distracting, especially this parasol, well, this folded parasol in the top left-hand corner. Now, sure, I could try and use flash compensation to, to darken down the, uh, the image, but really the only way that I could get the background um, to get much darker would be to again would be to tighten up the aperture and then increase the power of the flash but then you know we want a short depth of field don't we that's what we want in our portraits we want that background to stay out of focus so it's nice and uh, not distracting as they say so let's go to the next one so this is the kind of starting point for the background this is kind of how dark I want the background to be probably maybe a little bit darker because you can see the parasol cell on the top left hand corner so this is again we're at f2.8 we're at a thousandth of a second now well beyond anything that the pop-up flash could deal with or a standard uh, extra flash could deal with um, remember the highest sync speed is normally about 250 of a second on some cameras I think it's a 200th of a second on my Canon so as you can see so it's a bit darker but obviously my subject is way too dark um, again we're at f2.8 so what I do now is I put the um, Apple light flash on the camera while well, I turn it on basically and um, put it into high speed sync high speed sync mode there's a little button on the back that does that and then Bing. So even though we're at um, a, a thousandth of a second and at f2.8, I can use the flash to light up my subject. And actually, uh, as a point of interest, although I think I was shooting this in manual mode, the flash is in ETTL mode, so the flash is just is doing everything automatically. I don't really have to think about it at all. So as you can see, my subject is nice and bright. And my background is a lot less distracting. Now, I know it's a, <clears throat> it's a little bit harsh. You know, you probably you would probably want to use a diffuser or something like that or an umbrella in front of the flash if you could but you know, remember this is just to give you examples of what you could do remember we're going from that sort of brightness there in the background to that sort of brightness now so what i do next is now i double the shutter speed to a two thousandth of a second <laughs> To darken the background even further, but my, you know, the the, the uh, Apple light white 700 C keeps the subject nice and bright. And again, we're at f 2.8, so the background is um, is uh, nice and blurred as well. And obviously, at this point, you may well decide to actually move the camera or move your subject to get rid of this parasol because it's still a little bit bright in the background. But just for the just for the hell of it, I went up to a fourth, a four, one a four thousandth. I can't say four thousandth, four thousandth of a second. So as you can see, we're you know we're really up now. I think that's about the maximum shutter speed my 600 DT3 I will do. Our subject is still perfectly well exposed, and the background has gone really but dark. I mean, just think of those situations where when you're outside, when you're taking a portrait or a product shot, you know, it might be a car or something like that, and you want to darken the background down how powerful this would be because again let's just compare that if we go all the way back to kind of uh, well yeah uh, this shot here that's how bright the kind of ambient light would be with a normal exposure but because the YH700C has got high speed sync we can get it down to the like that which is you know it's almost pitch black isn't it so the next thing I want to do is what I've done is I put the camera uh, I've changed the white balance to fluorescent so we've kind of got this little bit of a a bluish haze going on in the background uh, there's no flash at this point um, and then if, if I turn the flash on what would happen is I would get this so my subject is actually nice and well lit we've got the bluish background but my subject is a bit blue as well so what you then do is you then gel the flash so I've put a couple of quarter um, orange gels on on the flash to make the, the the output of the flash a lot warmer to kind of balance that and what you then end up with is something like that where now we've got more of a natural color to the uh, to the ivory bust than than it was before so you can use this in situations say where you've got um say you could do like a dramatic portrait of someone say they were like a footballer or a rugby player or something like that against a fairly normal looking sky maybe a few clouds in the sky you know a little bit overcast so it does have a little bit of color throw throw your camera into um 
uh, fluorescent white balance. So everything goes a little bit blue. Gel your flash orange so that the, so that the, the flash warms up your subjects so they look like they're the normal colour. And all of a sudden, instead of somebody standing against a normal looking sky, they're standing against a, a moody, blue, stormy looking sky. All incredibly easily. And as I said, one of the big advantages is not only am I doing high speed sync, I'm doing high speed sync automatically with the flash as well so there we go there's a quick look at high speed sync and the fact that you can still use your flash on your camera right up to and well above a four thousandth of a second okay so hopefully with those examples i'll give you an idea of why and how high speed sync can be incredibly useful at its simplest, it enables you to use your flash as a fill while outside on sunny days, while still being able to shoot with a wide aperture for those uh, um, small depth of field looking portraits that we all love. But it also enables you to sort of take control of ambient light in almost any situation, you know, to darken things down um, and then to be able to use your flash as, uh, as the main light. I mean, in the examples that I've kind of shown you today, the, the, the flash was on my camera, but imagine if you started to go off camera with your flash and all the creative opportunities that would entail. So anyway, that's enough for me. Again, in this video, I've been using the YH700C, which is amazing value uh, from Apolite, <laughs> because it has all the functions of a more expensive strobe. And in fact, I shouldn't really call it a budget um, strobe or a budget flash, because that gives you the wrong impression about what this, what this flash can do. Um, but it is uh, incredibly cheap as well. I mean, you can pick up one of these babies on Amazon.co.uk in the UK for under £60 at the moment. And I think it's uh, under $90 in the USA as well. So, you know, well worth investing. If you're thinking about getting a, if you think about getting a off-camera flash or an additional flash, seriously consider one of these babies. And as I've said in many of my videos before, it's probably the one accessory that you will come by that will transform the look of your photographs in a way that almost nothing else will the ability to be able to bounce bounce light off ceilings and create a natural light looking photograph when there is no natural light um, is very very good indeed anyway that's enough from me waffling on thanks for watching please subscribe and i'll see you again soon